Right, if we uh, start with fitness, any new developments this week? Um, no, I actually think it's the same. So, still, Lungi out. Uh, handful of weeks. Uh, Bansi actually looking looking good. I think he's he's still uh, he's still going, you know, according to the plan. But I think actually he he's um, he's he's looking a little bit better than what we expected. But still, also a couple of weeks with him. Yeah, you said you were open to avoid surgery on Christian Fastnacht and on Lungi. Are you going to still be able to do that? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, Fasi is uh, Fasnak is in a place where we have to take that decision, but because he will also be out for a while, um, so it's a, it's it's a matter of to see how it goes the first couple of weeks to find out whether a surgery is needed or we can actually uh, we can avoid that, which all of us hope for. So we have to wait a couple of, of weeks. Yeah, I also wanted to ask you about Jose Cordoba. Yeah. Where do you feel he is? Obviously, not not started a league game, but had a few no. minutes now. Would he be in contention to start tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fair to say. And like I said, uh, a week ago the plan is still with him. We need to build him, uh, especially physical, uh, because he had so so little rest in between the the seasons. Uh, so we need to to be careful. But of course, he played last Saturday and is is definitely in our plans for the for the game tomorrow. Yeah, and there was obviously some big news last night. Ante Sienats became your player. What sort of player do you think you've got there? Good technical player, a player that can cover more positions up front. He can play to the right. He can play uh, as a nine. He can play the ten position. He's a he's a good technical player. Um, also some size. He's a tall guy, so uh, so can also give us some some something in the you know, of course with, with, with hitters, but also in in set plays where where he will be a an important player for us. So I think he he's actually also what we spoke a little bit about. That instead of having Strikers that are quite similar, and then, then instead looking for for options where it's it's uh, they can they can cover more positions and they can do a little bit different from from some of the other guys. Yeah, given the strength of Josh Sargent up front, do you feel like for his development and getting game time, it was important that he's versatile and can maybe help another. Yeah, I think that's fair to say because of course, uh, if I was a striker looking at at Josh being the number nine, I would maybe be a little bit careful about taking the taking that step to another club. Um, but it's uh, it was in our plans that it, it needed to be a striker that that had experience in, in playing more positions than only the nine position. And, and Ante has been playing that, and is is game fit. He played ninety minutes uh, last Sunday, so and also in a in a position just behind the striker. So uh, so it's a uh, it's a guy we are we are really excited to have him in the building now. Yeah, but he's only only twenty. Obviously, it's a big step up. It's going to take a bit of time to adapt as well, isn't it? It will. I think it will. Uh, it will for every player joining this this league and, and this country. It's a, uh, it's competitive. There's a lot of games. It's a, uh, it's a tough league. And that's uh, that's a part of it. But that's also what he needed uh, as the next step in his career. So so he's up for it. And of course, everyone knows what it what it takes to be able to compete here in this league. And we have to support him. But he's he's ready. And that's that's also what is important for us. That that it's not a player where. Uh, where I think we have to wait for for six months or, or more than that for him to be ready. I think he's he'll be in the he'll be in the mix, and I think he'll be also competing for 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 starting position already from from day one. Do you think that's important for all of the signings you've brought in this summer, or is it about a bit of a blend as well? It depends a little bit. Uh, uh, of course, when we look at players, when we sell players from from certain positions, uh, we also need to bring in players that can cover these positions. They can. Be ready to step in and play uh, directly from from day one. Uh, I think with other signings, it's 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 also okay that we build a little bit for the future as well. So uh, some of the young ones that, that that can be brought in as well is maybe a little bit more for the future than for now. But still, it is important that they can add some some value to the team from from day one. Uh, otherwise, it, it it will make no sense for us to bring them. Yeah, he's also the, your fifth sign in this summer. That's left-footed. I don't know if that's a, a conscious thing. Is we it? Spoke, we spoke is about it, it the yeah. other the other day, and it's yeah, it was it's funny. Yeah, it's not. It's not it was not something we planned when we started the season. And <laughs> yeah. said, okay, we only need to bring in left-footed players. That was a, that was not, that was not something we planned for. Yeah, does that mean you might be about to bring in a right-footer? <laughs> I think there will be a right-footed player in the building soon. <laughs> Yeah, you've. Uh, I'm sure you won't give it, give me the name, so I'm going to bring it up. Oscar Schwartau, I think I've got the pronunciation right there. 
obviously somebody who we know the club are interested in. What are your thoughts on him? Uh, he's a good player. He's a uh, he's a player with a with a very good timing in his game. He's good at reading offensive situations, joining the box at the right time. Um, has a, a, a good vision for for scoring goals and being um, being involved offensively. Uh, can cover a lot of ground. He has a good physique. Uh, played early in the Danish league and has been used to a competitive environment for for several years now. Even though he's he's young, um, so a player, of course, that that's interested for and interesting for us. Yeah, I think he scored a pretty nice goal against you. I can't remember that. <laughs> Yeah. So, where would you say that that deal is sort of along the line? Is that something getting a bit close, maybe? <laughs> I think it's fair to say it's getting close. Yeah. And, Let's uh, see. Yeah. In terms of the the exit door, obviously a couple of situations there as well. Maybe the most advanced one looks like Jonathan Rowe. Can you tell us sort of where we are with that now? We are uh, there where we have given him permission to to travel to to visit another club and. And negotiate uh, on his own, his, his his personal terms. So, so that's where we are. Uh, of course, it's football, so still many things can happen. You never know until it's it's finalized and everything is is signed. Uh, so many things can happen. But but we had we have uh, we have accepted that he can travel. How how did it work with? I know last week you hinted that maybe there might have been sort of a, a meeting with the team and things. Did he get the chance to have that before the the acceptable bid came in? Yeah, he had that. Uh, I think it was very good, and I think uh, talking about Johnny's behaviour the last the last couple of weeks has been has been very good. Um, so so nothing there. He also had this. He spoke to the team, and and of course was sad about the situation, which is like I also said, um, something that can happen but should not happen. Uh, and we should all, always be be able to, of course, forgive and and move on, and that that's how it is. Uh, but also still knowing that. That it's not like you can just as a player behave like you want to behave because you want to you want to have a transfer. Yeah. Uh, so we were pretty clear also with Johnny and and, and his supporting team that they they will take a, a good offer for us to accept it. It's not like you can just come and knock the door and say I want to leave and then we accept that. It's a uh, it's a little bit the same story with Adam where there was some offers in the beginning of the of the window. And it was it was a clear no for us. Yeah. So you cannot give any players away for free. Uh, so. We have to wait and see, but it seems like it's going to be a good deal for everyone here. Yeah, does it feel like a disappointing way to to end his time at the club? I know you obviously haven't been working with him no. for long, but for a fan favourite to be leaving in this way, does it feel quite disappointing? I think I think it is. I hope I hope that that we got to a point here towards the end where it got a little bit better. Uh, I hope the fans as well will will also forgive him in the in the future. I, I hope the fans will be. Uh, in the future, be at a place where we can also welcome him back, if that's going to be the case some someday. You never know in football. Um, but but I think I think definitely the last couple of weeks has, has have been better, and also Johnny accepting that it was not the the right thing to do, and 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 also telling that both to players and staff and everyone in in here, and and we've been supporting him. So I think it's always a little bit sad when a player leaves, and he's been a part of this this club for so many years when they leave in a bad way. So I think we we have we have still with this case to see if we can we can remember the good stories and the good, good the good memories um, and like I said hopefully uh, if that's going to be the case in the future uh, we can see Johnny back back again. Did you get the sense that he was quite disappointed with how things have, have ended, especially sort of with fans and? and I think he was a little bit uh, he was a little bit surprised maybe how it how it turned out and and the reactions about it and and so on because it was not it was definitely not a. a a decision on on game day where he have thought that much about okay how what will actually be the consequences what will actually be um, be the reactions from fans and, and and media and so on after this and that's sometimes tough learning but it's it's sometimes the best learning you can get because now he's he's about to go to a place where it's fair to say there's also some pressure um, and you have to to be able to to deal with with also fans that are quite passionate so. Uh, hopefully, it was good learning, tough learning, but good learning. And and I think for every young player, it's uh, it's it's important to have at some point in their career. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff around it, but ultimately, it is another positive story, isn't it? In terms of the, the club's model and developing a player through the academy and then selling them on for 
a significant fee? I think it's a, a, I think more or less everything around this transfer window, window has been very positive. I think uh, it's not many clubs at a Champions League, Champions League level where they make transfers out of the building on, on the amount of, of money that we have done so far this, this window, which is impressive. Um, still, we have to invest them again. So that can be the future case again for us that we that we have good players here here in the in the building that can perform for the team and then at a point in their, in their career take the next step to an even bigger club than this because it's when we create these stories when we have these stories uh, it also open up players' eyes out there in the big world and they look at Norris and see okay there's actually it actually makes sense for me to come here because it's a good club I can perform in a good league. And it can be also a, a, a good step for 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 the player in in in, in their careers. So, uh, so many many positive stories in this window so far. Obviously, it's a lot of quality to replace, but it gives an opportunity for the players left in your squad to step up, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And and what we still have to look at is, of course, do we need to strengthen the team? Uh, some areas where we can maybe uh, need one or two players more, um, and it of course also gives us the options to do it, but. But still important for us that we look at the players that are in the building now and the players that are ready to take the next step in their careers because it's, so, it's, it's important for us that we also open up that door. And now it was, was Gabe the other night against Blackburn where I don't think many of us in here expected that he would be, he would be making his debut in the first home game of the season against Blackburn. When we, also fair to say when we started pre-season, it was not something that's, that I expected either. So. But it's, it's important for us that we open up that door and the players, they feel and see that that door is open. Of course, we have to, to do it with the, you know, with the right timing and find the right balance in the team because we have to be able to perform. We have to be able to make, make good results also when we play tomorrow. But it's a, it's a part of the strategy that the, the young guys, they, uh, they need to be able to see that there's a, there's a future for them here. Yeah, I think one of those that people would have assumed might have been able to step into that role was Abu Kamara. Mm. But news broke earlier this week that he's handed in a, a transfer request. If you could just tell us a little bit about how that played out and how you found out about that. Uh, yeah, to be fair, we've had a lot of, of talks actually with Abu, and he's a, he's 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 a, he's been talking to us openly about the situation that it is a little bit difficult for him at the club at the moment. I think he was disappointed that he was not starting the first one in Oxford and he was disappointed that he didn't start against against Blackburn. So sometimes for young players also how to deal with these disappointments because there will there will be disappointments now but definitely also in the future for, for him and, and more or less for every player. Uh, so it's how to deal with that but he's been open to us and we've had conversations about it. Of course it was a, a little surprise that there was a transfer request but it's a uh, Sometimes how it is, and he cannot always also affect uh, the guys that are supporting him. Uh, but he's he's quite open about the situation that it is a little bit difficult for him at the moment. He find he finds the things here a little bit tough uh, with the competition and, and and all of that. So hopefully we can get him in a place where where again this can be this can be learning for him and and and, and valuable learning. Um, so we can take a step in the right direction for us. But also of course we have to understand that that if he doesn't want to be here. Then, then we of course can be open to that as well. But it's the same like with Adam. It's the same like with Johnny. We cannot give any players away for free. So if we decide that the option and, and the offer is not good enough, then there will be no deal. Yeah, if you compare it to that row situation, obviously he sort of let let the team down on the opening day. But does this feel like maybe slightly less of a, a significant step, even if it maybe isn't ideal? It is because, like I said, Abu has been quite open about it and, and him and I have I've had some talks also this week and also the, the week before. So I knew about the situation. I knew that he he, he found it difficult, uh, his, his situation here. So it is something that we have been speaking about a lot, uh, I will say. So I don't think it's the, the, it's the right decision to hand in a transfer request. I think actually we can, we can find better solutions than that. But he's also still young and, and he's also still learning and... Sometimes emotions can take over, but he's been he's been dealing with this in a way where he's been open about how he feels and his situation and so on, which is, is so much more easy for us also to to respond to, and so we know what we have to deal with here. Will there be sort of disciplinary repercussions to that, or do you not see it in that sort of no, way? No, it's not important for us because, like I said, it's he's been quite open, so 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 there's nothing hidden in this. There's nothing that uh, that's been a surprise for us. Uh, it's been. It's been easy for us to see that he's, he's struggling a bit and, and we try to support him the best possible way. We have a, a great supporting team here 
uh, they will do everything they can to to see if we can we can support a young guy in a situation in his life and career that is a little bit tricky, a little bit difficult. Uh, that's that's everything we can do. And then, of course, we also need to be open for for him to to leave the club if that's the best case. But but like I said, we can only do it if if the offer is right. So will he be available for selection this weekend? He'll be available because he's been training with us and there's been nothing regarding that. He's been in all week and he's been a part of the team all week. Last uh, transfer question, I, I promise. You've obviously announced that Guillermo Montoya won't be staying at the club. Um, why was that decision made? Again, we spoke with uh, we spoke with Monty after the, the first part of pre-season. Uh, we gave him some minutes to see where, where he was and, and, and for us to find out whether he could actually compete for that left-back position or maybe be the backup. And we found that that maybe that's that was too big a step for him to take for now. Uh, and then of course some some contract stuff and so on, where it for him will maybe be the best uh, to go out there as a free agent to be able to find the next step in in, in his career. And that was that was okay for us. Uh, we wanna we wanna support him the best possible way in finding a, a another club. And and this was a, a good option for both. Both uh, both parts here, so uh, that, that that's that's more or less it. We gave him we gave him a chance, and we decided that he was maybe not not close enough to the team. Moving on to this weekend in Sheffield United, what sort of test do you think they'll provide? It's going to be a tough one. Uh, it's a good team, Sheffield. Of course, they come with with the uh, with Premier League tempo uh, in their legs. I've been watching the the last couple of games they played. They have some good players, good technical skill players, and also some physical. Strong guys that can cause us some some troubles. Um, so definitely, we have to be prepared, uh, both uh, in possession, out of possession. Um, so it's a game where we have to be focused for 90 minutes plus. Uh, otherwise, they can cause they can cause troubles and they can they can score goals more or less out of nothing. So um, it's a it's a tri- tricky opponent, a, a good side. I was watching uh, Chris Wilder's press conference earlier today, and he mentioned the fact that maybe his team wouldn't look to press the whole time and and win the ball a few the whole time. Does that create problems for you when you want to bring on that press and then play through it? I think what we can expect is, is that some teams will do it, sometimes some teams will not. Uh, that's how it is. We prepare, of course, for both. We can see when Sheffield they play, sometimes they step up high pressing, especially when the opposition they have goal kicks. Uh, and then also some parts of the game where they sit back and, and defend a little bit lower. So it is something we've prepared for. Um, and of course, we need solutions in, in all parts of the game. So uh, we need to see it as an attacking opportunity for us when they put us under pressure. And we need to see it as an opportunity for us when they defend low. So we have we have trained all week on this and, and hopefully we are we are prepared. You obviously haven't won a, a league game yet. Is that weighing on your mind at all? I'll say what is, is it, it's, it's mostly about the performance. Of course, I would love to give the, the fans a home win tomorrow. Uh, I would have loved that on, on Saturday as well. And... and Especially also because it was so close. Uh, don't get me wrong; it's a, it's always a better Saturday if you win than if you don't. So, uh, but still, we are in a in, in a phase of of the of the strategy here and the style of play where we still have to build. So we have to really, really be careful not to look too much into results. Uh, uh, the performance is very, very important for us going forward. And, and again, don't get me wrong; we do everything we can to win the game tomorrow. But a good good performance for us is also very important. Yeah, given what you spoke about just there in terms of the performance and the process a little bit, do you feel you've got the, the patience maybe from the fans? It, it feels to me like that at least to start. Like I said, Saturday after the game I was I was surprised but also I was also proud of the reaction from the fans because I, I definitely feel that uh, I think the, the, the players felt the same. I mentioned the situation with Gabe where, where uh, he came off and, and, and was still applauded by, by the fans even though the result at that time was, was 1-0 up for Blackburn. Uh, so definitely, we feel that, and it's so important because it's it's not something you can just expect and just yeah just take for granted that it would be there. Uh, but it's it's hugely important for us, and it's it's hugely important for us as, as well tomorrow because there will be tricky moments in the game, there will be difficult moments in the game, and again, what we felt, uh, especially after that one-one goal on Saturday, was just was a was a huge, massive feeling for us, and it, it gave us that boost to go for the for the second. So. It means a lot to us. Yeah, just a couple more from me. I wanted to ask you about that sort of centre back position because I think it's fair to say Shane Duffy and Grant Hanley have had a decent amount of criticism for their performances in the last couple of weeks. But do you feel that experience is a, a valuable part of, of that defence? 
it is and 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 what is and with all due, due respect because it is it is difficult to see especially from the outside but but sometimes you also as a coach need to take into consideration what the players they give on a daily basis uh, and here we talk about two experienced players where they give a lot to the to the environment they give a lot to to the young players they have the energy to go and support them uh, grant did it the other night against blackburn even though he was not playing but he had the energy to go and support some of the younger guys who was about to to play the game and so on, which is so important for us, which is so important when you when you change the direction of, of strategy and style of, of play a little bit, that you have these experienced guys that can be on pitch or at least close to the pitch and, and, and support. Uh, so that's, of course, also something we need in games. Uh, and, and for the moment, we have decided that there's competition on the centre-back position. And, and we have four or five players available for these positions. And, and what we aim to do is to find, going forward, two players that, that play the most games for us. But of course, that there needs to be competition on every position. Yeah, does it, does it feel like maybe there is still a bit of adaptation that's required? And how far along that journey do you feel? Yeah, like yeah there, there is. There is definitely. And there will be. And there will be. We, we will sit down here in September and, and, and nothing will be perfect. Uh, but like I said, it's important that we, that we can perform. And it's important that we can perform on a on a weekly basis still even though we are building uh that's sometimes the tricky part in football um but but that we definitely have to do and and i also expect that the team will be much better in october than, than what we see now but again we have to be able to uh, to perform we have to be able to get results we have to be able to to celebrate wins on a saturday even though we are we are still expecting to be better yeah i just wanted to finish by asking about Borja Saint, who obviously had a, a very good performance last week and i think he's somebody in norwich fans thought could step up and become a real star player this season. Do you feel like that's that's maybe starting to happen? He's a fan favourite, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like him because he's so... He's an emotional guy and, and, and what you see is what you get. There's, 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 there's nothing being, being hidden or anything like this. He's just, he's just all out whenever we, we play games. So it's a... Uh, Sometimes it's 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 important for teams and it's very good for teams to have these players where you just okay he's out there when the when the game starts he's he's gone uh, he's pressing he's running he's moving he's he's counter pressing he's he's stripling he's he's trying to shoot so he's so much involved and that's exactly what we need and and again also to raise a good atmosphere in the, with the crowd uh, he's also one of these these players that can that can create that uh, atmosphere in the stadium because he can do something on his own once in a while and he can do brilliant shots and dribbles and stuff like this. So I think he's definitely moving in the right direction. And I was, I was actually pleased with his, uh, with his pressing game on Saturday because he was, he was covering a lot of ground. Thanks, Janice. Donny? Hi, nice to see you again. Um, just two questions. First of all, Sheffield United, in the past, have been contests which have been fiercely competitive because of their former manager, uh, Neil Warnock. And some fans have described it almost like a... Norwich Derby, you're expecting that sort of a contest? Uh, yeah, of course, it's, 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 it's a little bit difficult for me to say when I'm, I'm not used to any kind of derby feeling with the <laughs> first time in my career as a coach I'm, I'm going to play against uh, Sheffield United. What I can guarantee is that we will be at the stadium on time. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the first part about creating a good atmosphere and uh, creating a good, uh, good game for us tomorrow. Um, but of course, I like it, and players like it when there's a little bit tension, when there's a little bit in the air. You you can feel it, you can smell it, and there's maybe sometimes a little bit more than only only three p points at stake. So uh, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a a tough one, but hopefully a good one. Yeah. And regards, Antti, was that a player that you were aware of beforehand, or is it one that Ben sort of presented as a as a target, so to speak? Uh, I didn't know him when I was a. Uh, when I was in, in, in Denmark, but it was it was a player that I think one of the first days I came in here was brought up and we discussed him and we, we actually tried to set up meetings already back then. Um, so it's a player where it's been an ongoing process for, yeah, what is this now, six, seven weeks. Uh, but like with, with all other transfer deals and, and players in, out, it takes time, it takes a lot of conversations, a lot of talks, a lot of negotiation. Uh, and it's, it's it's never something that can just be done overnight. So uh, so we've been pushing, we've been hoping, 
at some point we, we maybe didn't think it was realistic for us and then we found out okay we could actually get it done and that was that was important for us and that was that's exciting for us but he's been one who's who's been on the on the board for quite a while thank you all right thanks Tony.